Welcome back to the Troubleshooting Life Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Poston, with my co-host, Jay Peters, where we talk about various topics, sharing our experiences on life and finance. Hey, Jay, what's up? Good morning. What's going on, man? Morning, morning. Yeah. It's not a, not a pleasant morning, but it's a morning. <laughs> yeah, time change. Got us. <laughs> got us bad, man. <laughs> yeah, man. How was your week? I, I actually wasn't too bad. It was pretty busy. You know, we had a bunch of people in the office this week, so uh and then work in different places was very helpful friday was kind of rough but you know yeah it is what yeah it is. I mean, yeah i'm telling you if i yeah i, I definitely would have stayed but yeah, you know uh well you know that's uh, yeah whatever we'll, we'll work that out so we can make sure that doesn't happen again so <laughs> yeah. and then i had a uh, drill yesterday too so yeah yeah that's yeah now that could get tough yeah because uh yeah Drill really is the early mornings. I think once you get going, it's it's not as hard. It's not that bad. But yeah. you, with that getting up in the morning to go do whatever they, you know you need to do, yeah. that's, that's the rough part. <laughs> I think it's just like the mindset change, right? Because you know when you're in uniform, it's definitely different when you're out of uniform. Yeah. Right. So like, I'm not saying my level of respect goes up or anything, but <laughs> but it, it changes, right? I have to respect people because of their rank or whatever it is right or and i'm not a big fan of uh providing respect to people just because they have like something on their chest right so but yeah, yeah no no it, no that's it's definitely a difference yeah my for some reason yeah my mind does change especially back since i was like active duty for a good little while my mind when it's time to drill it starts to turn back to active duty but then once mm. i get there i have to realize no i'm in the reserves now and i have to like calm it down or just yeah. kind of be more relaxed about it, but yeah. I still, I'm very punctual when it comes to, yeah. you know, when it comes to uh, stuff that deals with military uh, yeah. versus like, you know, it seems like civilian, you could be punctual. Uh, everybody appreciates, but it's not the same, you know? No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. No. What about uh, you, man? How was your week? It was, you know, it was, it was good. Uh, I, I'll say I definitely uh, was tired at the end of it. Uh, yeah, we, no doubt. yeah. Yeah. Like you said, we had a lot going on in the office and yeah wife and kids yeah they, they know that yeah they're doing all right uh now they're out for well the kids are out for spring break yeah oh, that's right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah i might be you know trying to figure out what i need to do early so i can kind of spend a little time with them or yeah uh, yeah 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 because they'll drive the wife crazy <laughs> <laughs> no doubt yeah yeah all in all yes uh good week everybody's doing good we can't pass by too quick i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, your uh, goals. Uh, you got any update on your goals, or you just uh, yeah, you yeah, start yeah. a new one? <laughs> yeah, I got I got a bunch of goals, but but the <laughs> yeah. one, I, but the one I'm putting out on the podcast to keep me accountable, right, is um is getting a you know a property, right, or at least being on contract or within the option period of a property by the end of March. This past week, I put an offer on Friday to for a hey, this property man all right so it's a duplex right it's going for 510 i put down oh i was gonna i put an offer in for 540 the next day my realtor says that they're gonna extend the deadline for submissions and that their current highest offer is 580 right i'm like all right i might have to pull out of that one because 580 is a little <laughs> bit out there yeah like, but and then there's uh, a few properties so there's three similar properties all selling for 475 each all duplexes right but the person's also trying to sell the that three set uh as a portfolio uh for 1.4 million so and they've already got an offer on the entire portfolio (laughs) and they've got uh and they're possibly going to get an all cash offer today we'll find out an all cash offer today for the entire portfolio but um if they don't get the cash offer, then I'm gonna I'm gonna put an offer on one of the the duplexes. Probably go about five hundred, maybe five twenty five. But yeah, it's oh, crazy no. out here, man. Yeah, yeah. So we we might have to talk about that one after after this, man. Because yeah, you know, if we we go in as a partner on that one, we, we probably can seal that deal. So yeah. Oh yeah. no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, if that cash offer uh, doesn't go through, you know, if they still want to do some type of financing, we can, you know, try to roll in with that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. uh, going going in as a portfolio would be a lot better. Uh, you'll get more out of it. So I, yeah. I think that 
yeah, that might be a better better option. I don't know, but I'm like, dang, <laughs> man, 1.4? 1. 4. 1. Yeah, well, you, yeah, I know, it, and it's crazy right now because of how everything is driven up, you know, like yeah. all the prices, everything. Obviously, we can see it with small things and with inflation because, like, yeah. uh, gas, food, all the uh, states are starting to go up. <laughs> that's just, yeah, that's not small anymore, man. That, dude, gas is over five bucks already. I was like, so my girl took my uh, car yesterday morning because I was getting ready for uh, for drill and stuff, and she went to go grocery shopping real quick, and she went to go fill up my uh, tank. Dude, she said it was like sixty five bucks, yeah. and I'm like, I drive a hybrid. What do you mean sixty five bucks? And I was like, this is why I got a hybrid. <laughs> yeah, like, hey. like, no, no, it, hey, it's it started to remind. Well, hopefully we don't get like Switzerland. That was man, I'm telling you, I, I went to Switzerland and everything was double the price. So say like if you something that was five dollars would be ten dollars like mm. literally it, it, yeah totally different there yeah well, don't they also pour a lot of that into the into the people or into the economy i don't know that, well, for that fact, yeah but. yeah see, yeah that that part i don't know I, you know as a american american coming uh to another country yeah. especially i'm already living in one country which was germany yeah. Yeah. and then and then i'm going to another country and i'm like yo this is more expensive than germany what's going on <laughs> <laughs> going back to germany <laughs> yeah so yeah if we ever hit something like that i know the income or yeah the income would definitely would have to double also yeah. just to meet that demand yeah. um or no think, one no one will be able to afford anything so. yeah well because i think switzerland is also one of those ones where they have you universal health care right yeah. and it's not like just garbage health care right they get pretty decent health care so I don't know. That might be a, a Europe thing in general, because I know Germany was like like that, where they take care mm. of the people. Yeah. Like the, I think uh, Australia is the same way, too, man. They yeah. have universal health care. They just don't have universal dental. Mm, OK. Yeah. See, I never looked in it that deep. I just remember how when you work as, say, one of the, the smaller jobs, right, like mm. as a server or whatever, right, like your mm. everyday job, they're covered just like a person who is at a, a doctor. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah so like. They, they and they received an actual income they didn't just work off tips yeah uh, yeah so yeah, yeah yeah totally different over there you know yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i will say yeah. though like uh you know going like overseas and going to different places right like the the service is totally different like yeah. and i mean like different in a good way compared to to america like because it seems like and this isn't all places right but like when you go someplace in america like any restaurant like even say like cheesecake factory Right. It seems like, you know, they, they're like working for the tips. Right. Yeah. But when I go overseas, like they do it because they're of service. Right. Because you're yeah. a customer, because you're a person. Yeah. Right. They're not looking to like, like, like you said, shady or whatever it is, like anything on the background. Right. So I'm like, man, uh, it's just crazy. The culture change just to, just in like the smaller details. Yeah. Um, no, so. no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should check out a, uh, a McDonald's, man. Our McDonald's. Yeah. compared to their mcdonald's like oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah like totally different like oh, when yeah. we were in germany like they had one mcdonald's set up like a cafe yeah so like you go in there you drink coffee relax and yeah, yeah. so like it, they treat it totally different i i saw a worker one time cleaning mm. and i've never seen any workers here in america clean the way she was cleaning like, <laughs> no doubt. literally cleaned everything turned oh. tables upside down cleaned the bottom oh, yeah. of the table yeah, like I was like, yo, like no one be able to stick gum under here because she was yeah. like, <laughs> she was she on was it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. uh, yeah. just a different you know uh, level of standard, right? Like yeah. that's just what they set. And and I actually have been to a, a McDonald's outside of the states when I was in Portugal and stuff. And again, I don't really remember it too often, but yeah. it definitely was different. I can tell you that. Like the the feeling there was yeah. different. But what I actually remember the most different was the food, right? Because it's not the it's not actually American like beef and all that other stuff that they get uh, yeah. here in the States. Right. But in Portugal, but, like it, it just tasted better yeah. in a way. I, Cause like, it, it felt like, cause you know, they have street food there too. Right. And they have stuff like kind of like sandwiches or, or burgers and dude, that stuff was really good. But like, even at McDonald's, it had like that, that good quality type stuff. I was like, heck yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's and, and some of those things. Yeah. I definitely would like to bring to America. I, that's why I would, you know, want my own restaurant, but I would mm. want to start out as a, you know, as a franchisee for, you mm. know, like, yeah, first to do this, mm. you know, so I can learn how everything is ran, mm. you know, in this industry, whatever, whatever restaurant, in, I mean, sorry, whatever fast food restaurant it is, mm. or 
So like just learn how they do things so you can uh, learn how to improve the quality over mm. time. Because yeah, they treat things so, so like so much better, like or or they just treat it differently, you know. Mm. And I think we take for granted some of the things that we have over here because we have it, you know. It's definitely it's so, yeah, it's easy. And there they don't have that many fast food restaurants. So and but here we have like fast food restaurants everywhere. Yeah, you know. You yeah. might you'll have them all on the same corner, multiple yeah. ones, you know. Oh, even if they're like, even if it's like, say, fast food joint, it's not really like fast food because it's still like, or it's not. I don't want to say franchise. What, what's the other word? It's like not mass produced fast food. It's like oh, okay. made yeah. still where they're at, right? Because right. like they made still got, order. Yeah, yeah. Like they still got fried chicken. They still got pizza. They still got burgers. But yeah. it's like they make it there. Like they they're not having all this frozen stuff come around, right? So. It, yeah so it's definitely different yeah so some, some of those things like to bring that here i think would be pretty cool i think people will respect it yeah i, I think that people would probably change their mind about how restaurants should be treated or fast food yeah. restaurants be treated if they saw some of the the things that were in other countries yeah you know? i agree i think just exposing yourself to other cultures and how other cultures interact yeah you just like with, say with people like with their own people is just mind-blowing or a shock to most people here yeah yeah uh, and uh, and i hate to say it that you know a lot of people don't travel like some people don't mm. make it out of outside of their city or outside of their town just to even yeah. see so, how someone else is living i you know i think you know that might be a separate podcast right there man yeah, like to yeah. just talk about that you know <laughs> no it definitely will be because like i don't want to cover it too much yeah. Like you said, separate podcasts. But no, I think that's one of the benefits of the military is getting you out of that comfort zone, getting you out of your own environment yeah. and then exposing you to whether that's different cultures or, or different areas of life. Yep. Our topic of this week, don't let anyone else invest more more into you than you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and this is uh, your topic, Jay, which is yeah, a sir. pretty cool topic. So I yeah, like it. Yeah. 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 So what this kind of came out from, man. So I was listening to uh, like a few podcasts or maybe just listening to like some motivational audio yeah. and they said this, right. They did like, don't let anyone invest more into you than you. Right. And what that means, and they kind of put it in a more tangible way that like, say if you're in college or if you're in school, right. And a professor spends an hour instructing yeah. you and teaching you that yeah. you, you yourself should spend at least two hours, right. Or double what they did. Because yeah. if you don't, you're letting them pour more into you than you are doing for yourself, right? You're saying that that they value you more than you value yourself. So yeah. it's just this this concept of not letting anyone, whether that's your boss, whether that's your family, your wife, what, whatever it is, um, invest more time, invest more money, invest more energy than you will invest in yourself or or to them. Right. Because because if it's one not reciprocal and they see that you're not doing the same things for yourself, it becomes some sort of like parasitic relationship. Right. Where they're giving you more than you're willing to put out. And then you look like a parasite just there to take. Right. And I've never wanted to be in the position to take. I've always wanted to be in the position to give to others. Right. And I never want anyone to think that I'm a I'm a taker. Right. I want to be a producer and I want to give others, whether that's respect, whether that's time, whether that's money, whatever is like an equivalent or something of greater value to them. Yeah. But like, what's your and I know we were kind of talking about it uh, a little bit before, but kind of walk me through like your experience for that. Well, I mean, I'll say on that one, I wish I, you know, I had this podcast or someone in my life to tell me about the professor thing. If you're going to someone spends one hour and you then you need to spend two hours outside of that. And I mean, that's something I tell my my daughter, not necessarily in that way, yeah. but when it uh, comes to, all right, she's so between mm. class, piano and uh, gymnastics, right? Mm. So these things that, they, that she's in, that she's spending time, she's spending maybe, you know, well, technically, you know, she spends a great deal of hours in class, right? So that means, you know, when she comes home and she has homework, sometimes you might have to do something a little outside of homework mm. just to make sure you're understanding it, right? Right. Okay. And then, yeah. And then like with our piano, I was like, you're, you could push the class further along if you want to by actually taking the time and practicing, mastering what you just learned from the teacher. So when you go to class next week, when she does it, when she sees that you're already picked up everything, hitting the notes properly without, you know, messing up, 
then she's just going to push push you along further right mm. you know it's kind of like that you know you see oh well they're retaining it right you know yeah. it, and I, I mean i think that's showing appreciation to the uh um, mm. the person that's teaching you by retaining the information by actually uh, doing a little bit more than what was given to you in in the class and that's mm. the same way I, I tell about gymnastics right if you want to be a gymnast to me i think you know because you you literally have to be a well oiled machine, right? Mm, you, can't, yes. you, got, you can't put crap in your body, and no. you have to constantly work out to make sure that you're strengthening up certain parts of your body to be able to handle yourself. Mm-hmm. And and I you know I tell my daughter this, I'm like, hey, you want to be a gymnast, you know, you you got to put a little bit more time. So she yeah. just had a meet this this Saturday, right? So uh, yeah, I asked her. I walked up to the coach and asked him, hey, what what should my daughter be doing? you know, outside of your, your class. And then he was telling me, you know, core exercises, do some chin-ups, do, you know, uh, what's that wrist strengthening exercise and ankle mm. tr- strengthening exercise. And I was like, then, the, you know, the reason why I gathered that information is because I'm going to relay it to my daughter and I'm going to go like, Hey, this is what your coach said. And this mm. will make you better. Cause I was looking at the silver team cause she's on the bronze team. So I was looking mm. at the silver team and they're like, they're already flipping. You're right. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, you can be there. You just need to go ahead and improve yourself outside right. of class you know so that, yeah that's that's more my ex, my experience on that yeah and going back to the coach thing man I, one of the other things i heard is that you know if coach has to tell you when to practice then you're yeah. never going to make it right yeah. so like like you know, like your professionals right even your collegiate players right they made it there whether that's basketball football baseball whatever sport you want to yeah. want to inject there they made it there but they didn't just go to practice Right. They didn't just go to whatever practices was after school or anything. They also or when they were at home, they practiced. They practiced on the weekends. Right. They they just kept practicing on that craft. Right. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be sports. It could be anything else, like you said, for academics, right? For homework. Yeah. Right. You can do other things, right? Like you can read on the off time. You can uh, if you know, especially in the younger years, you can do your own math problems, whatever it is, or challenge yourself more. But yeah, no, I I like that uh, the the coaching concept as well. Yeah, because I mean, you got to think about it. Like the the time that someone is putting into you, right? You know, that's that's very valuable. So mm. if you're you're not taking doing your due diligence by taking it a little bit further, then you're wasting that that mentor, that coach, that that professor, or you know, teacher, whoever it is, right? You're wasting their time by not putting a little bit extra into yourself. Yeah. So that that yeah, that that's how I feel on that that situation there, man. I agree. And I think a lot of people, right, they they expect and they accept handouts, right? And I'm not saying yeah. it's like if you're in need of help, receive the help. And But what I'm saying is that don't always expect handouts to be given to you, right? Yeah. I think like, especially with my generation, right, they, they expect things, right? They have like, um, what is that? that not ego yeah, no, i know what you're trying to say though you're, you're basically saying uh i mean literally it's what you just said it's expecting it right so it's like yeah i think in there it's a uh privilege to them like there you so, go yeah, yeah a yeah. privilege entitlement that's what i was entitled, going with. Yeah. entitlement they feel like they are entitled to something just because they are in a specific position or um whether that's a good or bad position right yeah. like they expect something to happen because you know they don't have money right give me a handout right and i think with with the Rona, right, with all these stimulus checks and with all these uh, different companies going to remote work, people are feel like they're entitled to do remote work, right? Yeah. People feel like they're entitled to free money from the government because that's what was set at the time. What I'm saying is that it's not, like I said, don't, I'm not saying not to take the handout. If it is provided to you as equal as it is to everyone else, then yes, take it. However, comma, do <laughs> more than just that, right? Like, don't always... Because if you're always going to expect a handout, you're never going to get anything more out of life, right? You're always going to get whatever that minimum or bare minimum is, right? Because you're you're now dependent on someone else doing something for you, right? You're dependent on someone else giving you food. You're dependent on someone else giving you money, right? You're never chasing after the money yourself or chasing after uh, the resources that you need to take care of yourself. No, I, uh, that is something that uh, I, I believe in. Do not, I don't, you know, take the handout if you need the handout. It's totally, you know, totally different than just accepting it, right? Because uh, how I believe it is, you know, you help yourself first, right? Yeah. And then the help that you receive outside of that, that's a bonus because yeah. you, you've already took the time to kind of look into what is needed and what mm-hmm. is expected. And because if you, you sit there and wait on the handout, 
I mean, you, yeah, if you don't make a plan outside of what's going on, then you're, you're basically just going to keep accepting the handout. You're mm-hmm. you're never going to make it out of that 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 rat race or make it out mm-hmm. of that that certain situation. Yeah. So I was just thinking because uh, when you're saying um, handouts, it made me think about other things too. Like when it comes to your, your finances, right? When you're mm-hmm. too too reliant on something, right? And uh, and I know this is taking it away from where we're saying here, where you invest hmm. more time into yourself, or I mean, more more someone else investing more time into you into you than you. But this this is goes along the line where you're 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 so dependent on whatever income it is, so your job, right? Hmm. In, in that sense, if you don't make plans to one day separate from that job, you hmm. know, you're too dependent. You may never separate from that job. Correct. You know, regardless if you're going to retire or if you just, hey, I'm, I'm only going to do 10 years of this job. You don't make mm. plans outside of it where like, hey, I'm already creating, I'm planting these seeds to have income later on that doesn't require my employer to keep taking care of me. Mm. You know, if you you make certain investments, you or you want to change career fields altogether, right? Mm. You want to do something else. You got to you got to start planting the seeds and start you know, working towards growing in another in another area. So that way mm. you're, you're, you're not so reliant on that help from your job. Yes, you are giving away your time, which you mm. know you're, you're trading. But if you don't learn how to separate, then you're going to continue to give your time for that money. Yeah. So that, that, that made me think about that when you said uh, too reliant. Yeah. Oh, and it literally, it, it is the same thing, right? You are, it's a little bit different in a way because you are receiving something that you are working towards yeah. and that you are that you are actually trading time for however like you said that reliance you are letting someone then invest more into you because then like they have control yeah over you right that that they know that they provide something that you probably couldn't get by yourself, right? Not yeah. saying that you couldn't get it from another company or whatever it is, but it's still an external entity that is providing you with income that you couldn't make your own income, right? Yeah. That you couldn't start your, say your own business, do your own investments, whatever it is. And in my opinion, that causes like a, a, a sense of uh, almost desperation, yeah. right? Because you're so reliant, right? You're so dependent on that uh, company or entity to provide you with income that you can't do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So no, like no. You, you're, you're, yeah, no, no. I'm just agreeing with what you did. No, that's true, man. Yeah. So like, yeah. so you act on this sense of desperation, and, and in my opinion, it's it is it can become incredibly toxic. It can become incredibly stressful mm-hmm. when you're only getting income from that one source, and yeah. it's not from you, right? Because yes, you'll be working, right? Yes, you'll be doing as much as possible, but they have no no entitlement to you, right? And you yep. have every dependency every they're not dependent on you right yeah. they don't need you specifically they can always find another person to replace your position and, exactly. and i'm saying like, i'm not saying yeah. they would do it right 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 right, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah but but it's still a possibility right they yeah. they they put a position but they didn't put your name on it right they didn't create the position for you right they put yeah. it out they put it on a job posting right they had the position somewhere and you, you applied for it you got it right however yeah. however many people they interviewed I'm sure one of those people could have taken the job as well, right? Or yeah. someone else, some subsequent person could have taken that job, right? Yeah. So, and that's what that's kind of still within the, the theme of what we're talking about. And then, uh, you know, kind of bringing it back into, you know, how we were saying about, you know, investing, someone investing more time into you, right? Some people might think that say, you know, wasting, you know, time, right? If you don't mm. ask for the help, right? You know, mm. instead of, you know, because my, my mentality is like, you know, let's try it first and then, okay, all right, I see how hard it is. I see what's, you know, what's needed. And now I know, right? So now when I get the help, now it's a bonus and now we're executing properly, right? Yeah, some people think that's wasting time because they go like, hey, maybe I should get the help first so I can spend my time elsewhere, right? So then, you know, and this time they're probably thinking more of the time, not as in, you know, not receiving those handouts. Mm. So, so I don't know how you think about that one. What do you think about people thinking about that? If it's, it's, it's a waste of time not to uh, get the help. I can see that. I can relate to that very well, right? That <laughs> that you don't want to ask for help because you don't want to be a burden, right? And yeah. and not just a waste of time, but like not just a waste of your time, but it could also be a waste of their time, right? And I never yeah. want to be like I said, I never want to be in the position to be a taker, right? I want or to be a receiver. I want to be a giver or a producer, yeah. right? So even the smallest things, right, man? Like uh, asking for advice right yeah. on something getting into a a group of people that already know yeah but you are either gonna like go out and do it yourself and figure it out there's a group of people that could have already given you that knowledge 
yeah. right? Great. I'm not saying you shouldn't still experience it yourself, but there are like things that could have connected a lot quicker. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and, yeah. And in my opinion, right, like stuff like like Rome, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, and it wasn't built with just one person, right? Right. It yeah. it, it took a collective of people. Granted, there, of course, there was a leader or a group of leaders that that kind of started or architected it, but it wasn't just one person. Right. So and if you're trying to build your empire, your legacy, it's not just you that's going to have to help build it. Yeah. So to me, that's it, it is a good, good point, because I I do that as well. Like I don't try to seek help, even though I know it will help me in general. Yeah, because I, I mean, that can lead into the, the, the next one. Right. When a person doesn't have any type of investment in it. They, they don't have a reason to stick around. It's easy for right. them to quit. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and that's a that's another principle, man. Like when people wake up in the morning, they don't have anyone dependent on them. Right. And and I mean, I can say this because I don't really have kids. So technically, I'm no one is currently dependent on me as in I don't like I don't have kids. I don't have a wife, whatever yeah. it is. But I still put it into my mentality that there is someone in the future that my income relies on. Right, that that the opportunities that I'm taking right now, they can take further opportunities, right? Whether that's in education, whether that's in in money or finances, whether that's in opportunities or exposure to different things, right? The things that I'm doing right now are to make sure that they can also receive those opportunities or or better opportunities. Yeah, no, I, I, it's kind of like this thing I heard. I think it was on another podcast. Is like uh, when you when you pay, you pay attention, mm. right? Oh, so, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. You, you know, when you've already invested the time, you invested the money or whatever, right? You're going to find it, find a way, right? Find a way to make sure that this succeeds or find a way to make sure you get through it. Right? Oh. So, and, you know, and I see that a lot of times that for, for me, I use student loans. Mm. I didn't, I wasn't expecting anyone else to pay that student loan mm. back except myself. So it made me want to figure out how to finish school, mm. no matter how rough it was for me. You know, because I knew I had this loan I need to pay back. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I have to get a job after this because I need to I need to pay this loan back. And, and so it, it made me come up with a way. If it wasn't going to be through employment, it's, it's going to be like some kind of creative idea I had to, mm-hmm. to make sure I do this, right? And, and I can tell you, yeah, college or I'll say at a university, it was fun, but then it, it was, it got difficult for me. And you know, at times I thought I wasn't, you know, college material, but then mm-hmm. when you realize that it's, it's more to it than just, going and making A's in class. Mm. It's about wanting to finish. It's about having that that enthusiasm about the career that you're about to have mm. or that motivation to, you know, hey, I'm gonna be this person. So I'm gonna finish. Mm. Right. So that yeah, that that's kind of like how I saw with that, you know, investing what not having enough like right, skin I, in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skin in the game. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. where you're you're like you're willing to quit. Yeah. I was not, yeah, I was not about to quit. I, I and especially after I made it that far, I, you know, went to a community college. Mm. And then, you know, dealt with my troubles there. And then I was like, okay, all right, I figured it out. Now I'm going to transfer to a university. And I, I was like, and I was like, I made it this far. And, I, and everywhere, I, like, I enjoy the, you know, my university. It wasn't even a big university, but just being around the people, being around, like, you know, all the different colleges, the, the academics, mm. you know, the things that, I mean, I don't know, I was, I was very motivated. So mm. yeah, that definitely made me not want to quit. And then also, you, you know, what I'm saying you have people looking up to you. Right. I, I had I, I have a younger sister, mm. and even though she didn't go to the same, you know, university or college I did. But the thing is showing her that this can be done. Mm. Yes, it will be hard, but mm. you still got to keep pressing through. No, I definitely agree. And and uh, same with me for college. But even like like military wise, like into boot camp. Yeah. Right. Like like they're there to break you. Right. And and, and mold you. But yeah. first, the, that, <laughs> but that, those initial portions where they try to break you down, and I'm not saying it like in a malicious way, but they they are trying to mold a specific type of person or a a a specific mentality yeah. in the military, right? But when they're breaking you, right, it, it can get pretty hard. Like both, like of course, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it is. But I remember that my my parents don't really have a lot of money, and they, and they never really did. But what happened? Was that like my dad had already set like the an airplane ticket because they could only afford for him to come over right for my for my boot camp graduation, and yeah. I knew I was not gonna fail. I was not gonna hel- get held back. I was gonna do everything in my power to make sure I went through boot camp. And same with my schooling, right? There was a finite time for me to finish, 
right? And I was going to finish in that time. I was not going to get rolled back. I wasn't going to waste my parents' money and their time to come out and, and I guess, celebrate me, but to actually, you know, see what their return on investment is for me, of course, for raising me. And for me, that, that really pushed me and helped me. Granted, I was in a, it was high stress, but, you know, you kind of, it's not like you get used to it, but you kind of just take it more often. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not really good with words. But, oh, no, uh, yeah, I mean, because yeah, you're trying to get, learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in that, in that sense, go. right? Yeah, because yeah. like, yeah, for me, yeah, the same thing. It, you know, it's a high stress environment, but I had, I had my mind set on a certain thing. I was trying to get my life together. And that was that point where I had lost my job. And mm. basically at that point, I was working two jobs mm. trying to uh, get, you know, before I went in, you know, mm. uh, so I was trying to, you know, get my, my, my life back together. Uh, when I saw opportunity, because one, I needed to pay back those student loans, I saw mm. opportunity to go into the military and they were giving me what I wanted. They were giving me a job. And then uh, I didn't know about the little small bonus. It, it, it is what it is with that one. But mm. like the, the overall amount of money for the student loan payment was like 65000 Right. So they would pay up to six, five thousand on my loans. I think at the time, I think I did oh, about 65, 65 because I, I actually went to another university because I was trying to do another degree mm-hmm. and uh, that didn't go through. Had all these different things going on in my life. So, you know, things were falling through. I, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to. And but I still had to pay this stuff back. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's why, uh, you know, I'm a priest of the military because it, it did. It, it kind of helped me with that. Uh, learning how to deal with stress, mm. learn, and, and it, it taught me that some of my problems weren't that I wasn't motivated. It was that I didn't know how to handle the pressure of a motivated person. Mm. Because you, as you as you become as you become an am, ambitious person, you're gonna have certain roadblocks. You're gonna have certain people that that don't fit into your life anymore. You you're you're always gonna something is always gonna get in your way, right? You you just kind of like learn how to push through, fight through, keep going. Yeah. And uh, the military, once I got, you know, in, in that, into the military, basically that's what it taught me. You can use this ambition. You can use this energy. You can keep, keep going. You can fight through the stress. Plus Mm. one, they won't let you, they won't let you quit. They're going to break you down, build you back up and tell you, you can't quit. You signed the contract. So you, you, you've learned that other piece, right? Not to quit, to keep, keep going, to be this tenacious person. You know, because uh, like, you, you have an obligation, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's going to be another podcast, right, is respecting your obligations, right? Because you have an obligation, like you said, for the military, you have an obligation because you signed a contract, right? Yeah. But you, as well, you also have an obligation to your family, right? Yep. To your kids, to your employer, Right. So that, 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 like I said, that's going to be another, another topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we don't have to go, to, <laughs> go yeah. too deep in that one yet. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. You know, the, the, the thing, too, if you don't put a little bit more time than you, then you're the person that's, take, you know, that's interested in helping you, you know, mm-hmm. like your mentor, right? That mentor can get burnt out, you know, yeah. and in me personally, how that, that that situation affects me is, you know, how the, the army, because mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm army, U.S. Army, and uh, the leadership a lot of times are forced to take an interest in their soldiers or, mm. you know what I'm saying? Or as they like to say, the, the junior enlisted or the mm. uh, the junior officers, right? So mm. whatever their leadership is, it's kind of m- more known that they're supposed to take, you know, interest in them and help them out and help them get to where they need to go. Mm. You know, and it depends on your the size of your, you know, unit, squad, whatever, right? You know, yeah. you may have to spend more attention to one, you know, more than the other. Because mm. cause some, some, they get it. They get that. They understand mm. that, you know, time is being invested in me. I'm going to use the best of my time. Right. Mm. And some the others, they don't get it. They like you put all this time into them and they still they're not mentally ready. Right. Mm. Yeah. So like, you know, I had a I had a soldier. We used to get up like five in the morning to go work out because I wanted her to get to uh, work on time. Mm. Her appointments would uh, also affect PT time. And so it, she had appointments like super early where she would, uh, it would only take her to where it's time to come to work. Yeah. So I came up with the solution. Hey, let's just get up a little bit earlier. Hey, she, she agreed and was, you know, I guess excited because I was actually taking the interest and, mm. and how I, you know, explained to her what was happening is we, we are forming a relationship. Now it's mm. not an intimate relationship. It's not anything right. like that, right? Not, no right. dating, but we're forming a relationship where we, we understand, hey, this is what we're doing, right? Mm-hmm. We're 
we're trying to get you prepared where you don't, you know, you're not ready to get out of the military or, you know, you're, you're trying to push forward and move to the next level. Mm. So, you know, as I'm doing this and uh, waking up every morning, we had conversations. She was a mature person. So it was easy to have conversations with her. So we, uh, we work out the hour we're supposed to work out. And sometimes our workouts end up turning out better because mm. when you do normal, regular PT with the unit, you have to do all this other stuff to go along with it. These prep mm. drills and all this, you know, all the things, cause it, it's, it's part of the regulation. Yeah. But when you, you, when you're off on your own, you can go like, okay, let's stretch for five minutes, you know what I'm saying? Get a quick warm up, and then boom, take off running or, mm. or, or break into uh hits exercises or whatever. Right. Mm. So yeah. like you, you know, you, 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 you get more time into it, but there's more time that I'm spent with this person doing these things, making sure that they're going to succeed in their, their career but then i in my mind she had a hidden agenda you know which was fine i'm okay with it because i'm i'm an advocate if you're ready to move to the next level go to the next level if you're ready to step off of whatever this is you're on now and and go into a whole nother path i'm like yeah hey, hey go for it so it, it would be nice to know up front that in reality she really wanted to get out yeah. right and and that's that's the reason why a lot of times when i counsel her i counsel her own life and yeah. counseled her on with on military because I yeah. kind of I was starting to pick it up, and, you know yeah. before yeah. But it it actually you know I think she wasn't the the main reason why I was ready to get out, mm-hmm. but or you know she was kind of more of like the, the icing on the cake because mm-hmm. I've had other soldiers it's the same thing yeah where they are they're not mentally there mm-hmm. they they just they're going through the motions. Mm. like to get it get whatever's done because yeah. uh, when i was in germany i had had soldiers they could not uh pass a pt test mm. and i could not understand why especially when they look healthy and yeah. fit, right and so that's when i know it is mental so i spent mm. the same thing spend this time take them on five mile runs mm. uh, or go out to the field and we do nothing but hit exercises or yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying basically just you know full out yeah. pushing hard right yeah. And, you know, that takes a toll on the body and that it takes does. a toll on Yeah. But, it, and, you know, pulling it back in as being the mentor, right. As the coach, this extra energy that's put out, it kind of makes you wonder, right. Okay. Should I be pushing this energy off to my family? All right. Or should I keep pushing this energy off on people who have these hidden agendas? Yeah. That right there made it where I had to start to make a decision. Mm. Hey, where do I want to spend my energy? Do I want to spend my energy helping my family, pushing my family, because mm-hmm. this same enthusiasm that I, that I have to mentor, you know, these soldiers or whoever, right, whoever mm-hmm. wants the information from me, mm-hmm. then I should uh, probably start to, for, you know, kind of tra- transition more over to my family, because I was mm-hmm. like, hey, I got young kids, and I want, I want them to be groomed up right, because it did teach me something by helping, you know, young individuals try mm-hmm. to get to where they want to be, because that, that meant that a lot of times the the mentality is built at home. Yes. That that culture that you have at home, right? That right. that that teaches you, hey, you're supposed to invest more time in yourself than the person mm. that's helping you. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely agree. And I think if you're not exposed to it at a younger age, because you're more impressionable, impressionable. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. No, you, 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 yeah I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at a younger age, right? Then you you may never fully understand it. Right. Or you may have to go through it like like how you said, where you were pouring into these people and uh, especially like your junior enlisted and they weren't being reciprocal with it or they nothing was coming out of it. Right. Yeah. And the, the way I put it is that like people plant a lot of seeds. Right. But not all seeds grow. Right. But you're still putting that time, that effort. You're still watering. You're still nurturing that seed yeah. as much as you can. But then it, it can become demoralizing when that seed nothing comes into fruition from that seed for, for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, that, yeah. So I guess we should start to kind of taper on down. Cause this was, yeah, and this is yeah. a really good topic. Cause uh, I know we could keep going, but uh, yeah, we're going to start transitioning into our, uh, our frugal and cheap segment. Yeah. Now this is something that I know some people think about or, or talk about, right. Or make a big deal about, cause I've seen it on articles where they go like, Hey, this such and such, it just tipped this amount of money, right? Yeah. Right. So we'll put this under the the cheap and frugal. Only tipping a couple of dollars at a restaurant, right? Oh, is dude. that cheap? Is that cheap or frugal? Which one? Do you, that, which one? <laughs> that is definitely cheap. And the, and the reason why I say it's cheap and it's kind of kind of in theme with this is that you're 
these people are working hard. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm not saying that they're doing the most laborious things, but as a person that has been a server at, and has been in like a service type of industry. Yeah. They definitely deserve more than what they're getting paid. So for me, a minimum is 20%, right. Or five bucks. Right. Yeah. Like if I'm only getting a couple things, right. And it's not necessarily like five bucks isn't like the 20% or is more than 20%, then I'm going to give them five bucks. Right. But no, I typically tip 20%. Now I will say that is if they are serving me, if they yeah. are delivering something to me, but if I have to pick it up and they just hand me a bag, yeah, I'm not tipping that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not tipping that because that's not the same. Like they're not providing any additional service than than just standing behind a counter. But if they're interacting with you, if they're taking your order, if they're refilling your drinks, like yeah. And the thing is, I do twenty percent, even if it's bad service. Like yeah, I don't care. Right? It's of it's about being a blessing, right, to others, right? And and the blessing, and again, I'm not a religious person, but the the overall blessing is that you can be a blessing, right? Is to be in the, the position to be a blessing. So if you can't tip 20%, then you shouldn't be there, yeah. right? Like you, you shouldn't, like, I don't care how much it is, right? If it's a, if it's a bougie restaurant, if it's a, uh, just a regular restaurant, if you can't tip 20%, don't be there. And I think, I can't remember who it was. It might've been like 50, it might've been like Rick Ross or something, but they were like, man, if you can't buy two of them, then you can't afford it. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, that's a, that, that is a good way to look at things. For yeah, restaurant wise though, it, it does uh, depend on the service. Yeah, because yeah. for sure. But then that's one of those things. I still end up giving them twenty percent. Right. I remember this guy. He uh, he looked so lazy, man. It's like you could tell this job was just something to do. Right. Like he come out, he just grab one little thing, stroll out to the table, and go back. And then like so at the end when i saw how slow he was like do, at doing things not slow in other ways but slow as in speed wise <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah basically i end up writing him so i tipped him right yeah. so they can't ever say go like oh yeah he was just trying to be cheap anyway he just found ways not to do it no i wrote him a note on the back of the receipt that i tipped mm. the money so he had no choice but to look at it and had yeah. to turn it in because that's how it works at restaurants, right? Yeah. You have to turn in that slip that you have so you can get your money and they yeah. can count it at the end of the day, right? <laughs> so uh, that I left a note going down that that thing telling him how to, I gave him a true tip, uh, the receipt. So yeah. like he couldn't say that he didn't get a tip, right? So right. he got money tip and he yeah. got an actual written tip. So yeah. I would, hey, I was, uh, I was serious about this. I, I was kind of heated <laughs> and my wife, <laughs> she was like, <laughs> She was like, you know, laughing at me and stuff like, you know, you know, you know, why am I so upset? But I'm like, dude is lazy. Like you yeah. can tell like this, this is, this It's not what I was used to. Right. Yeah. I'm used to like, you're, you're kind of hustling. Everybody I was around when I was at a restaurant was hustling. They were yeah. flipping tables and they were trying to make, st make sure everything is, you know, uh, done. And mm -hmm. Hey, let me get this customer out of here. So I get my next one because Hey, you were reliant. Like, psh, I think at the time it was like, two dollars and 15 cents an hour yeah. so everything you do is on tips and you still got to tip the bar and you still got to tip the bus boy and you know or or girl or whatever and i think you 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 might have to tip the host too you know it yeah. just depends and uh yeah so i was yeah no i was i was on it i was trying to make sure you know stuff was done and the people i was around they made sure stuff was done so when i see this guy i'm like no nah, this is offensive right here this is offensive. Yeah. <laughs> like, i don't like this so yeah i would say if you uh, don't, you won't, you tip only because you're, you can't afford to be at the restaurant. Yeah. You're being cheap. You should probably, yeah, yeah you should probably cook at home. And, yeah. and I mean, honestly, it's a better, it's better time spent with people and your mm -hmm. money is, is spent a lot better when you cook at home anyway. A lot of times when we go out to eat, it's just to do something different. It's, it's just a, Hey, no cooking, no cooking today. You know, let's take a break from cooking. Let's, let's go out, hang out. Why, you know, talk amongst each other, see the people, stuff like that. Uh, you know, yeah. So that's how I see going out to restaurants. And if you can't afford it, yeah, you, you probably should stay at home, which, yeah. yeah, like I said, better money well spent if you stay at home. Yeah. And we're yeah. not saying that like people that necessarily can't afford to go out and, and tip that they, they can't have that enjoyable time with people. Like you said, like cooking at home, having that, uh, you know, just, experience with others that's still 
is meaningful and, and still as powerful as you know going out for a few drinks right because like alcohol is uh cheaper at a liquor store right you can yeah. have it at your place you can yep. get as belligerent as you want right but or yep. whatever it is yeah man I, I at least it's just like my thinking is that i i never liked going out and then not being able to tip like it was just it hurt because like i said i was also in the service industry right i also had a job where i was working for tips so i never wanted to be on the other side of it not giving a tip right and honestly when yeah. i was younger like i at that time i wasn't in the service industry where i needed needed money but so i was like always grateful for tips but i never like expected them right whether i gave good service or or and, and in my opinion i i tended to give decent or good service but right if, if they were willing to tip and the amount they tipped that, that was up to them right yeah. i was the reliance on that income at the time so but it, it is different right when you're when you're dealing with someone's income and and they are reliant on that income to to live to survive right it's important that you compensate them properly that is, yeah definitely definitely so yes <laughs> definitely cheap if you don't tip you know it 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 is more it i guess it's more of a uh an attitude right there's something yeah. that you do you're like you're like hey i don't you know i don't like to cheat uh i don't like the tip of you know if they don't do a certain thing you know mm. stuff like that but it, but that, that reality, wasn't the agreement that wasn't the agreement it, right? exactly yeah the it, agreement but, is that you they served you they they came into work they did what they were supposed to do Right. I get it. Like if they're spilling stuff on you, blah, 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 whatever it is. Right. If they're giving you incredibly bad service and you're not going to like dicks or something. Right. And they're giving you uh, bad service. <laughs> yeah. Then, then, yeah, don't still yeah. tip them. But, you know, do what Craig said, you know, give them a little note. Right. Because like like you said, <laughs> they're ob obligated to, to hand that in for them to receive that tip uh, from the drawer. So, yeah. So yeah, they will see that. They'll definitely see that the tip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You wanna uh close this on now? Yeah, man, yeah, man. I got you. Well, that was a that was a good topic. Yeah. All right, so no. uh thank you everyone for listening. This is Jay and Craig signing off with Troubleshooting Life Podcast. We'll see you next week. All right, see you next week. <laughs>